Can we start this service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Can you begin to appreciate the name for another wonderful time? Can you say thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing us into your house this morning? I can bet with you this is not the plan of the enemy for you. This is not the plan of the enemy for you. That is why the Bible says many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord deliver them of all. Is a God that can deliver you from every peril, from every arrow that fly at new day, from every serpent, from every power of the enemy. If you know I want to acknowledge God, can you open your mouth and say thank you, Heavenly Father? Thank you, Lord, for another wonderful thing you said to do in my life this morning. Thank you because this morning we go from strength to strength. Open your heart, open your mouth, and appreciate it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another wonderful time in your presence. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The psalmist say every one of them are carried in Zion. They go from strength to strength. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because this morning we go from strength to strength. We will go from glory to glory. I appreciate God for the grace He has given unto you to be in His presence this morning. I tell you, a lot of people are willing to come, but the grace is not there. But you have been selected. You have been appointed to be in this service. It is not by your might, it is not by your power. It is by the grace of the Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us this grace. Lord, we appreciate you. And we see you and we acknowledge you as the doer of all this. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because your hand has lifted us, your hand has done this. Can you begin to make your heart expectation known unto him this morning? He said the and expectation of the righteous you will not cut short. Can you begin to say, Father Lord, because I'm in this service this morning, do this for me, do that for me. God is here to answer your prayer, is a faithful God to answer your prayer. Open your heart, open your mind, because God is said to do a new thing in your life this morning. God is said to take you to your next level. He is there to open your to open up your destiny. I make your heart expectation known unto him. Say, Father Lord, do this, do that for me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can you pray that Father Lord, as men that are coming behind, bring them safely, O God, quicken their step and let them come quickly. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. Thank you, Lord, for what you said to do in our midst this morning. Thank you, Lord, because we go from grace to grace, from strength to strength. Lord, we appreciate you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Blessed be your holy name. Do what you alone can do in our midst this morning. Perform what only your hands can perform in our midst this morning. Do what only your presence can manifest in our midst this morning. We are depending on you, Holy Ghost. We are depending on you, Father. We are depending on you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise, we give you honor. Blessed be your holy name. I know God has been good to you during the way, and you have a testimony. Why don't you go to Bronebo at the back and register your testimony? And you shall be called in due course to share your testimony to the God's people. Praise the living Jesus. If you are happy to be in this service once again, can you jam your hands together for Jesus? Can you clap for Jesus as a clap offering? Praise the Lord. Can we shout a louder hallelujah? Amen. Amen. I welcome the choir. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's begin to give God the way of offering this morning. Thank God for bringing you back into his presence. It's not of him that we will let her run it, but of God that showeth us grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we receive all our praises this morning as we worship you in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're happy to be in this covenant day of marital breakthrough and anointing service, I want you to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please remain seated. We shall be calling ourselves to worship by reading the book of Isaiah chapter 62 from verse 1 to 9. So we we'll read it responsibly. I'll read verse 1, then we we'll read the second verse. Isaiah 62, 1 to 9. Are you there? Yes, we're there. Hallelujah. Amen. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be, I will not rest. Unto the righteousness thereof of go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that's born it. Verse 2. And the dead shall, shall see thy righteousness, and all kings glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be crowned of glory in the hand of the Lord, and for some who say, Amen. Amen. And the royal thy them in the hand of thy God. Amen. Verse 4. Thou shalt no more be damned for singing, neither shalt thou any more be damned bitterly. For thou shalt be called Ezra, and thy land will For the Lord will die in thee, and thy life shall be married. For as a young man married a virgin, so shall thy son marry thee. Amen. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall God rejoice over thee. Amen. Verse 6. I have said, O Shepherd, O O Jerusalem, we shall never hold that peace day or night. He that the Lord, be the peace of the night. And give him no rest to, till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Verse 8. The Lord's cross over my life, and my end for the strength. Surely I will no more leave thy tongue to be meet for thy heavens. Amen. Amen. And the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine. For the good which thou hast able. We'll read verse 9 together. But they that are gathered, he shall eat it. Amen. Praise the Lord. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the cause of the Lord. Amen. You are welcome to the covenant day of marital breakthrough and an anointing service. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give that clap it's for Jesus. You can do it better as the clap of the Lord. Do it louder and louder. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you extend the hand of greetings to the person by your right, by your left, behind you, and in front of you? Can you say you are welcome in Jesus' name? Can you can you be a prophet and say a word of prayer unto his holy name? Can you say as you come today? The Lord will visit you. The Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Because we are in this service today, I pray this service shall answer to his name in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be a service that you will never recover from because of the encounter you will have today in the mighty name of Jesus. Because God, who is the husband of the church, Jesus, is here for our marital breakthrough and anointing service and i pray as the anointing comes upon you today every yoke shall be broken in the mighty name of jesus Amen. praise the lord Hallelujah. it is announcement time i shall be announced tell your neighbor you shall be announced and i pray you shall be announced to your work in the mighty name of jesus Amen. positively gloriously in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me welcome us to Winners Chapel International Praise Day. 
the branch of the Living Faith Church worldwide, also known as Winners Chapel International. Our mandate is to vibrate the world from all oppressions of the devil to the preaching of the word of faith. Praise the Lord. Good news, good news, good news. Praise God. The prophetic focus for the month of March 2022 is I'm redeemed for the topmost top. Hi, I'm redeemed for the topmost top. Can we all echo it together? I am, I am redeemed, redeemed for the topmost top. And the book for the month include following the path of the ego, exploring the secret of sources, sources buttons, sources strategies, Success system, rolling the world. All these books are authored by our Father in the Lord, Dr. David O. Oyedebo. Please endeavor to lay your hands on any of this material, especially rolling the world. And I pray the Lord will open the eyes of your understanding as you do this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All these materials they are available on the Dominion online store and the Amazon store and Apple online store. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Yeah. As to us fellowship, our house to us fellowship, also known as Home comes up every Saturday in all our WSF centers. The time is 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. It is time for us to share the word of God together. We always have a wonderful time when we do all say because everybody is a prophet, everybody is a pastor. Why not? It's being done online now. You can always join the same our Zoom ID that we use. We can use it to join just sometimes we don't even spend up to an hour, 45 minutes, we are done. Anywhere you are, you can always join and let us share your ideas and what the Holy Spirit are going start to you concerning the topic. I pray as we keep it in mind. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. And also note that more as provider of our name on our WSL platform to accommodate girls in their homes. Interested in the fever, please see God open for more duties. I pray as you do this, God will make a blessing of the to be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Tithe and offering for your tithe, worship offering. Sacrificial offering, vows, and every other confidence seed you've made with the Lord. Please, the account details they are as follows on the screen BSB 064 159, account number 1047 The bank is common red bank. I pray God will increase your blessing as you do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Testimony. Can you share the great act of God in your life as to see those testimonies preserved, multiplied, and perfected? You may send your testimony to testimonies at foreignerschapelbracelet.com or register your testimony at the beginning of the service with Brother Nobu and you shall be called in due course to share it. Praise the Lord. Please can you note that our Social media handles, our um, Facebook and the Instagram page. They are there. Please search online. Is you can go to the church website and get those things and follow the church. Follow the church and place your review. Talk. The services are being posted every Sunday. You can always, you know, follow it and then the other people too will follow you. We are planning to go online as soon as possible. So we need enough people to follow the church, you know, the church social angles. So we will have enough followers and we have more people that will follow it. Please take time to do it during the week and I pray as you obey, the Lord will bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus. Kingdom service, serving God pays in accordance with the word of God in the book of Job 36, 11. We encourage you to join any of our service unit. And as you do so, you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Please don't hesitate to indicate your interest. 
the service group that are in need of people, they are listed on the screen. And I pray. Okay, let me quickly go through the let me quickly go through the unit within the church that we are in need of people to serve. Children department, technical unit, Austrian unit, choir, evangelism and follow-up. Please endeavor to join any of the service. And it is good to serve God. What smart people do is that smart people serve God. Smart people serve God. Please let us serve God with our time. Let us serve God with everything in us. And I pray God will bless you and bless your bread and take sicknesses away from your knees according to his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Also know that we normally have a pre-service prayer meeting. Before service, we hand over everything we want to do into the hands of the Lord. Please, the time is 9.15 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. Specifically for the, the leaders and the head of unit and as many people that can come early to church to be part of the service prayer. As you do this, God will remember you for a blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please know that we shall be connecting online to our memo chapter made for the midweek service on the YouTube. The time is 7 p 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And it's on every Wednesday. We shall be waiting on the Lord in fasting and prayer. And as our custom is, we we'll break our fast with communion. Connect with your loved ones, family, and friends for a life changing encounter on our prayer altar, fair is well, and communion table. God bless you as you do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good news, good news, good news. Jam your hands together for Jesus. Join us every Sunday for an amazing service. The time for our service is 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Please don't forget to inform your friends, your family, and neighbors. Those people you've been taking you want to talk to, those your friends, your co-workers. Why not? A text message alone can do. You are not the one to bring them. It is the only those that will bring them. All you just need to do is just to tell them what the Lord is doing. Like that woman, he said, come and see. Come and see. That was the only thing. And multitude believed it. Believe that and they come to Jesus. You too can be like that. You can tell them, come and see. You don't need to preach. You don't need to do anything. Because God is already preparing the harvest field. All you need to do is just to reap in all the harvest. And I pray as you do this, the Lord will add every other thing that you need in your life. He said, for that Father, He knows that you are in need of those things. And that shall be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Good news, good news, good news. Amen. Next Sunday, the 27th of March, 2022, at Promenas Chapel International Brisbane shall be our monthly Thanksgiving service. This service is double and edit barrel. It has also been tagged as our next level banquet service. You don't want to miss this service for anything because the Lord will be here to crown all your efforts and to take you to the next level. Praise the living Jesus. Come with your attire and your dancing shoe. It is our Thanksgiving. We want to give God all the praise for what he has done. Please inform your friends, your neighbors, for what the Lord is in our means. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Permit me to quickly go through this uh, two documented testimonies. And I pray you shall be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. The first one is titled Marital Siege Broken. During one of the morning gospel raising, the second phase of the war double agenda tag, Operation Rescue, I invited a lady for a marital banquet service. She had she had lost all a marriage and a man. So I told her to come because I know that God will do something great in her life. When she asked if I was married, I answered no. But I'm certain my marital issue will 
be setting tomorrow. During the marital breakthrough banquet service, the bishop prophesied that some of us will receive proposal that same day. I believe the word of God's servants and received my portion. Like magic, when I got to, I received a message from a business contact who hasn't called me in a long while. I tried to discuss business with him, but he said, no, it is you I'm interested in, not business. The same day, say the same day, the same day he proposed marriage to me, Amazingly, the lady I invited, I invited, called me to share a testimony. A day after the marital breakthrough banquet, she also got a proposal. And then, God of wonder double is a reward. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The second one is titled Marital Breakthrough Fire So Many. Before I joined this commission, I believed God for a life partner. When the so many project for 2013 started, I didn't participate at all. On the last day of the project, I came into it and went on evangelism. On Saturday morning, I went for evangelism with a sister in my zone. On our way back, it was drizzling. Then a woman on my street called me and said, you people are disturbing yourself. Somebody like you cannot get married in Winner's Church. They are just deceiving you. Go elsewhere and look for your husband. Immediately, the other sister started crying. I determined not to cry because I knew that God had what she said. That year, I met my husband. Surprisingly, immediately, my assembly was available. The same woman who mocked my God was the first person who bought the cloth. As if that was not enough, after my registered wedding on October 17, 2014, that woman kneeled down before me and said, The God who has beautified you shall beautify my children. Amazingly, two months later, our daughter also got married. And then the God of Bishop Oyedepo answered prayer. Can we give God a testify and stand in order? Can we give a job offering unto the Lord? Testimony are the, are the signs that God is in our midst. It's only His hands that can perform testimonies. We give Him all the glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
Father, cause them to be maritally settled by your word today. Cause your word to establish the marital destinies of everyone believing you for a glorious marriage this year. Father, you say none shall be called barren, none shall be left in a desolate place, none shall be left forsaken because your word shall be coming today and the anointing oil of today's service. Everyone marital settlement shall be fully established. None shall return forsaken. None shall be termed desolate. In the name of Jesus, Father, by the power of your word and the anointing oil today, establish the marital destinies of everyone believing, believing you for a glorious marriage this year. Father, by your word, and the anointing oil today establish the marital destinies of everyone believing you for a glorious marriage this year. Everyone that has been turned forsaken, everyone that has been turned desolate, cause them to be married, cause them to be delighted in your presence, that the marital settlement shall be fully established in the name of Jesus. Radizu Zaradis Tata. Manaradezu, Eziradu, Zesaridadu, Eneredu Zuse, Yatata Ranane, Ezurudu, Matata Yadasara, Rato Sese, Father, by the power of your word and the anointing oil today, establish the marital destinies of everyone believing, believing in you for their glorious marriage this year. Everyone that has hoped and prayed and I look on to you for the marital settlement this year. Father, let your word, let it establish that marital destiny for them. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to appreciate God. Let's begin to give all the glory with our hands lifted up. Let us thank Him because we know He has established the marital destinies of everyone believing you for a glorious marriage destiny this year. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother, it's offering time. My blessing time. My blessing time, offering time. Hallelujah. Amen. We have another wonderful privilege this morning to honor God with our offering. With everything God has blessed us with, that we have come into this service to honor Him with. Let's begin to package our tithe, our offering, our shield of sacrifice, all our kingdom engagement we have vowed to worship God with. The book of Matthew, Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says, I give and it shall come back to you. Good measure, press and shake it together, running over, shall we give unto your bosom. So as we have done that this morning, let's rise up on our feet and lift our offering above our head and begin to pray on those offering on your hand this morning. In Jesus' name, Father, we bless you. We thank you. Thank you for another wonderful privilege to honor you this morning with our offering, Holy Spirit of the Living God. Jehovah, this day we pray and ask, O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we pray for your divine blessings upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, as we saw our seed this morning, Jehovah, King of glory, let every lack and want be terminated in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray we shall find favor in your sight. We shall find favor in the sight of men in the name of Jesus. Father, bless us on every side, our careers, our businesses, in our working place, Jehovah, King of glory, internal work of ages. And we pray and ask that you open the windows of heaven and shower us your blessing this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, every one of any one of us paying time, Jehovah, King of glory, let the devourers be destroyed for their sakes in the name of Jesus. Everlasting King of glory, we thank you. Receive our sacrifice this morning in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.
and begin to give thanks to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. Let's rise up on our feet this morning. Say, Father, I thank you for the privilege to be among the living today. Why don't you lift up your voices this morning and begin to celebrate God? Say, Father, thank you for the gift of life, Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to hear your word this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord. The scripture says for all the people gathered early in the morning for to hear you. Lord, I am here again to hear your word this morning. Father, visit me by your word. In the name of Jesus, let not any part of my life be left behind, Lord, this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I have not come here to be an onlooker. I have not come here to walk the bench. I have come here to partake of your word this morning. Father, visit me by your word. Let my own word come my way this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus went because they knew not the hour of their visitation. Lord, this morning, I am not going to miss my hour of visitation this morning. I am going to be visited mightily by your word and the mighty boy this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, visit me by your word this morning. Say to me, my eternal Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say to every form of turbulence in my mind. In the mighty name of Jesus. By the word this morning. Visit me, mighty Lord. As I believe you, God, for a glorious partner, Lord. For a glorious lifetime partner, Lord. Father, visit me this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you again this morning. We give you all the grace. Father, we are here again to hear your word. We ask that you visit us mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord Almighty, that the word that will meet everyone at the very point of their needs will come their ways this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. At the end of this service, Lord, our testimony shall be full, our joy shall be full in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's clap our hands together to Jesus to give us this morning as we take our seat. Let's be seated in God's presence. Praise the Lord. I appreciate God for this privilege and I appreciate His servant, Bishop David Loyedepo, for this rare privilege to bring us the word of God this morning. I pray that as I stand in His shoes, and upon his shoulder this morning, the same spirit, the same function that worked in his life will walk through me today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And at the end of the day, you and I will return blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. I would like to use this opportunity to welcome the first timers in our midst. If you are worshiping with us the first time on a Sunday like this, I would like you to stand up on your feet as we welcome you in our winner's way. Praise the Lord. You are worshiping with us for the first time. Can you rise up from the pit? I would like to identify with you. Praise the Lord. Brethren, let's welcome our sister. Let's the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I'd like you to stretch forth your hand for a word of prayer. 
Father, we thank you, Lord, for the lives of your daughter and your brother and your son here. I pray, Lord Almighty, that this time that they come to identify with us as the winning family, Lord, will be the beginning of a new dawn in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord Almighty, that things will begin to turn around in their favor from this day onward in the name of Jesus. Is there anything they might be believing you for? You know their hearts. Lord, this morning, visit them mightily concerning those concerns in the mighty name of Jesus. And let them share their testimonies on this altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Church, please clap your hands together for our brother and for our sister. Our all three members, they will place a particular pamphlet in your hands. Please endeavor to fill them. We would like to identify with you. We would like to pray with you. I would like to keep fellowshipping with you as well. Please right. kindly take your seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You are happy to be in God's presence. Why don't you shout glory? glory. Amen. Glorious things will keep happening in your lives in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We have been looking at the teaching series Exploring the Success Virtues in Kingdom Stewardship. But before we get into that, let's be reminded that the theme of the month is I am redeemed for the topmost of. Do you would you like to say that to yourself? I say it like you mean it. I am redeemed for the topmost of. I am redeemed for the topmost of. You will never be found at the back anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. You will only be above and above only in the name of Jesus. Amen. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. If you can put that on the screen, please. According as his divine power has given us all, has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to virtue and glory. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, part of God's original plan for you and I is for us to what? To live, you know, manifesting His glory, manifesting those virtues, those success virtues in the kingdom. Hallelujah. It is part of God's original plan for us to be glorious in marriage. We are not supposed to be marriage beggars. When our father is a marriage maker, praise the Lord. God instituted marriage for purpose, for a purpose. Hallelujah. And you and I are meant to part what? To enjoy, you know, glorious marital destiny. Hallelujah. But the devil, you know, does not want anyone to fulfill destiny. The devil does not want us to fulfill that glorious marital destiny. But I pray that for you this morning, you are experiencing a change of story in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So if God's plan for us originally was for us to manifest destiny, and part of that destiny is for us to manifest our glorious destiny in marriage. But the devil does not want us to do that. Why? Because of the fall of Adam. And when Adam fell, because of the temptation from Satan, now our marital glorious destiny a glorious marital destiny became a struggle. Praise the Lord. But for you this morning, you will no longer struggle to get that in the mighty name of Jesus. So, but the good news for us this morning is that every forces that have been militating against our marital destiny, whether you are married or you are still believing God for a marital partner, those forces will be shattered today by the word of God and the anointing this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. We have discovered from scriptures that all the things that pertain to life and godliness, so being gloriously married are part of the things that makes for life and godliness. Experiencing and manifesting our redemptive right, the seven redemptive right, glory, honor, blessing, riches, hallelujah. All those things are what? Are part of the fringe benefit that God has given to us. They are part of our redemptive right and we are supposed to manifest them. We said to ourselves last week, the creation waited for the manifestations of the sons of God, hallelujah. So if we are not expected to manifest anything less, than what? Our glorious destiny. Praise the Lord. And I pray that you and I this morning we won't miss out of that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But one thing that can, uh, you know, 
give us access or grant us access into our marital destiny or into fulfilling our destiny or into breaking through maritally is what? Serving God. Praise the Lord. And that is what we'll be exploring this morning, the success virtues in kingdom stewardship. Now, that tells all that there are virtues in the kingdom. What is still worship? Still worship is serving the interest of God. Papa said something, he said, when, when you are serving God, then you become servant of God. You become God's servant. The same way God described Abraham, Abraham my servant. And at the end of the day, Abraham graduated from being a servant of God to what? To a friend of God. By what? By service. Praise the Lord. So the question for you this morning is, how will God describe you? Can God describe you as a servant? Can God call you his friend? Praise the Lord. That will be a function of your service unto him. So when anyone that is serving the interest of another is a servant of that other. So when we serve God, that is what is termed still worship, kingdom still worship. You are serving the interest of God's kingdom. You are serving the interest of the advancement of his kingdom. And you see, we can serve the interest of the army, advancing the kingdom of God in so many ways. We can do that with our money. We can do that with our time. We can do that with our resources. Praise the Lord. You are seeing a vacuum in the house of God. You see something lying in front You feel that vacuum. Praise the Lord. God who sees your labor in the secret will do what? Will reward you openly. Praise the Lord. And we all know that our God is not a robber. He is a rewarder of them who did what? Who diligently seek him. And part of the ways we diligently seek God is what? Is by service through our service in the kingdom. And that is what culminates into what? Into still worship. Now when we talk about this still worship, that means when we engage ourselves in still worship, there are success virtues that becomes what? Fringe benefits on us. That becomes what? Wages and salary on us. Praise the Lord. And part of them, we will be exploring two of them this morning. And I pray that as we explore them, God will communicate a better understanding to you, which will change your understanding about serving God this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Psalm 34 and verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Part of the ways we seek God is by prayer. I said to someone on the evangelist, I said, see, there are certain things you don't need to pray for. As I'm standing here, there are certain things I don't need to pray for. I tell you what. Why? Because of my understanding about kingdom service. Because I know that I cannot be serving God and be serving sickness. It's not possible. So I can't be praying God, hear me, because I know I won't be sick. In the first instance, praise the Lord. I can't be serving God and be serving want and lack. No, it's not possible because my God is not a robber, He is not a, a, a user of men, but a rewarder of men. Praise the Lord. He is a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him in their service in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. So it is not everything that we need to pray for. If only you and I will make it a point of duty to serve God diligently. Praise the Lord. There is the place of diligence in every service because it is not every service that is rewardable. Praise the Lord. You can't be serving God with high service and expect it to be rewarded. It's not possible. You can't be serving God, claiming you are serving God with a certain title. It's not possible and, and expect to be rewarded. It's not possible. But God who sees our heart, God looks at the inward. He does not look at the outward man. Praise the Lord. That God is the same God that will reward us abundantly. And as such, we don't have to pray for certain things. Praise the Lord, like many others will do. I pray that God will give you a new understanding this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, one of the ways that we can deeply assess all things that make for life and godliness, including our glorious marital destiny, is what? Is dedication in serving God. Say with me, dedication in serving God. Dedication in serving God. I pray. That God will boost your zeal this morning by His word in the mighty name of Jesus. And as you continue to serve God, the reward embedded in that service will not elude you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, people in the world, we seek after so many things. We seek after jobs, we seek after clothing, we seek after food and food on our tables. Our elderly father knows that we have need of all these things. And he said, he said in his word, he said, if you be evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give to them that ask him? And not only what you want, he will also give you the Holy Spirit. But only 
when you ask. And one of the ways to ask is by sending them. And that was why Ezekiah was able to stand boldly to remind God, say, God, you can't kill me now, I can't die now. Because you remember this, you remember that. He put what, what? He put God into remembrance. I ask you today, what would be that thing that you will use to remind God of your situation? What is that thing that you can claim and use to remind God this morning? I pray that God will give you a new understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. So our services in the kingdom is one of the things that we can use to remind us. Say, God, remember I am doing this. Remember I am this. Remember I am that. Look at the days of Job. Job went through those, you know, atrocities and those calamities. But then he was able to remind God. Remember God. I was high to the blind. I was led, I was led to the lame. I was here to the, to the deaf. I was mouthed to the dumb. The meaning of those things was what? He was recounting those things, putting God in remembrance. Why? Because he was a generous man. He was serving God and he was also serving humanity. Praise the Lord. And that was why the scripture was able to describe Job as a man that is upright and perfect and eschewed evil. Praise the Lord. I pray that God will give you a new name from this service in the mighty name of Jesus. God will give you a new description that will show forth in your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, one thing that we need to understand while we are rendering our service to God, we have to be very careful, brethren. Many are in church today serving God or claiming that they are serving God, but they are seeking after title. Praise the Lord. Many are seeking after status, but those who seek after status will only end up as status. They can't go anywhere. But those who see, only those who see after service will end up in stardom. Praise the Lord. How did I know this? Daniel chapter 12, verse 3 tells us. He says, And they that turn many to righteousness, shall, and they that be white, shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness are stars forever. So as you are turning many to righteousness, as you are going on evangelism, you are reaching out to people, you are in the bus, you saw someone, the Holy Spirit is communicating to you. Why didn't you talk about Jesus to this person? Why didn't you establish a conversation with this person? Why didn't you say something about Christ to this person? And then you took a step to do that. God sees your, your labor in the city and he will definitely make sure you don't miss your reward. Praise the Lord. So those who turn many to righteousness, they do what? They end up as stars. They end up in stardom. But those who stay after statue and status in the church, they only end up as what? As statue. Praise the Lord. I pray that you and I will not end up as statue in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But rather, we will end up as stardom in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So please, I hold us this morning in our service. Let's see afterwards, serving God faithfully, serving God holy and acceptably, so that our, our services in His kingdom will be what? Duly rewarded. And when our cloud is full, I tell you, our rain will surely fall. I pray that when your cloud is full, your rain will surely fall in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So our still worship is not rated by the role that we are given in the church. Our still worship is, is, is rated by how well we perform in any task that we are given. Praise the Lord. Remember, when Jesus sent the 70, the scripture made us to understand that the 70 returned with joy and they testified. They said, even the demons were subject unto us in your name. And what did Jesus do? He gave them power as what? As a reward. Praise the Lord. Remember the parable of the talent. He said, well done, you faithful, uh, you good and faithful servant. Let's take a look at that scripture. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 23. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler. Over what? Over many things. Enter thou into thy rest. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I pray that you enter into the joy of the Lord this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As you make it a point of duty to serve God, you will enter into the joy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. It says, Know you not that they which run in the race run hard. But what? But one receive the price. He says, so therefore run. So brethren, I hold you this morning. Many people in a race, you understand, everyone is running towards what? Obtaining the price. But only one person will receive first. 
only one person will receive the number one prize. I pray that that will be you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will carry last in the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. So I hold you this morning as you make it a point of duty, as you make up your mind to change your perspective towards serving God this morning. Please do it in a way that will make you to obtain the prize in the mighty name of Jesus. The scripture tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 11, it says, Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. I pray that your spirit will become fervent from this day onward in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, one of the two things that we're looking at this morning number one, serving God is a platform for assessing supernatural wisdom. Serving God is a platform for assessing supernatural wisdom. The scripture tells us that true wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established. Praise the Lord. Now, marriage is one of those houses that we need to build by what? With wisdom. Every marriage that is void of wisdom is, is bound to end up in, in what? In disaster. Praise the Lord. There is wisdom. The wisdom is expected to be what? To be utilized in marriage. Otherwise, that marriage is ending nowhere. So if serving God is a platform to secure what? Wisdom, supernatural wisdom, wisdom that is above the natural, wisdom that is above the norms. The same way the people marveled at Jesus, they said, Whence has this man this wisdom? That even the sea and the wind obey him. Praise the Lord. They even testified again. They said, We have never saw it in this fashion. Praise the Lord. That means Christ was commanding the supernatural by what? By wisdom. Praise the Lord. And that was why he knew what to answer every man that asked him questions. Praise the Lord. So even in marriage, wisdom is a paramount virtue that we need to possess. Praise the Lord. Whether you are married or not, or you are still believing God for somebody, or you are already, you are, you are already in courtship. I tell you this morning, wisdom is one of the paramount virtues as children of God that we need to establish our successful marriage. I pray that that wisdom will not be found lacking in your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Praise the Lord. We will, you and I will be fools in the mighty name of Jesus. But one thing that we understand that is that our God is a custodian of wisdom. And if God is a, if Christ himself is a custodian of wisdom, he said to us in the book of James, he said, if any one of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth liberally and obedeth not. Praise the Lord. So one of the ways to seek God's wisdom, to seek supernatural wisdom, is serving God. Praise the Lord. First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. You want to establish, you want to experience honor and glory in your marriage, you need wisdom. And one of the ways to access that wisdom is by what? Is by serving God. Praise the Lord. I pray that this morning, glory and honor will not be found wanting in your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Also, we need to understand that serving God brings believers into companionship with God. He brings us into companionship with God. Serving Him brings us into companionship. When Jesus sent the disciples, He said, Go you into the world and preach the gospel. And in John chapter 15, verse 16, He says, I have chosen you and have ordained you. He said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you to go and bring forth food and that your food should remain. And in Mark chapter verse 16, the scripture tells us, praise the Lord. The scripture tells us, as they went in obedience to God's word, he was working with them with what? Confirming the words with signs following. Praise the Lord. So he was with them. So serving God is something that establishes what? God's partnership with us. Praise the Lord. He brings believers into what? Partnering with God on any issues. That we may be facing for time in our lives. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 8 and 9. Now he that planted and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husband, you are God's building. Praise the Lord. And the book of Revelation tells us. 
He said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. What is the reward that you think God will give to you for his service this morning? That is a rhetorical question for you and I this morning. I pray that as you make it a point of duty to keep serving God in a new dimension, you will testify of God's faithfulness in the mighty name of Jesus. So our God is the only wise God, and walking with Him makes us supernaturally wise. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number two, serving God is a platform for glory and honor for the living. Serving God is a platform for what? For experiencing glory and honor for the redeemed, only for the saved. Praise the Lord. Every soul winner is wise, and the wise shall inherit what? Glory. Praise the Lord. So only the wise will inherit glory. Only the wise will inherit what? His honor. How do we know this? Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30 tells us, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth soul is what? Is wise. And Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35 says, The wise shall inherit glory, for shame shall be the promotion of fools. You and I won't be fools from this day onward in the mighty name of Jesus. But rather, we will end up as stars forever and ever in the name of Jesus. Also, we need to understand that in the multitude of people is the king's honor. And God said, He that honors me, I will honor. So if you honor God with your service, you honor God by you know, serving God faithfully, serving God with your resources, serving God with your time, serving God with your energy, definitely God will honor you. And I pray that that will be your person in the mighty name of Jesus. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said in thee that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be ye far from me, for them that honor me are reborn, and they that despise me I will slightly, lightly esteem. May you not be lightly esteemed by God in the mighty name of Jesus. So in the multitude of people is the king's honor. When we honor God with our service, we honor God with our time, then he will in turn the world us with what? With honor, with glory, with virtues. I pray that that shall be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, we look at the example of David. David was a man. David was, you know, described by God as a servant. David was described by God as a servant. This, the, 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 the scripture tells us in Psalm 89, it says, I have found David my servant. He says, with my holy word have I anointed him. He said, neither shall the sins of wickedness afflict him any more as before time. Praise the Lord. Look at that. Look at that description from God. For God to actually recognize someone as a servant, then that tells you that that person must have served him to a certain extent. Praise the Lord. How will God describe you and I this morning? Praise the Lord. Let's look at that scripture. Psalm 89 from verse 20 to 24. I have found David my servant, with my only oil have I anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established, my hand also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the sons of wickedness afflict him. And I will be that his fault. So these are the things. God was making a vow. God was accounting those things that he was going to do for David. Out of what? Out of his service. Out of his what? His still worship unto God. Praise the Lord. These are things that David didn't need to pray for. But then, God was recounting all of these things. And these are the things that God eventually did for David. Praise the Lord. We also understood from the pages of scripture that David was not ashamed to celebrate and testify God, to testify of his, of his God. In Psalm 84 verse 10, he says, For a day in thy court is better than a thousand. I rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Praise the Lord. So that was a man testifying of God's goodness, saying that he would rather spend, you know, a day in the, court, in, the, in the house of God than to spend time with wicked people. Praise the Lord. So a day in the court of our God is better than a thousand in where? Than a thousand, praise the Lord. Is better than a thousand. And he would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of his God than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. Praise the Lord. So it is a good thing to what? To be dwelling in the presence of God, in the house of God. Remember this Psalm 23, you will always share the goodness every time. Goodness has a message that follow me the days of my life, and now we dwell in the house of the Lord. How many of us are actually dwelling in the house of the Lord? 
When we talk about dwelling in the house of the Lord, it is not only by saying that as a word of prayer, it is also by saying that as a proof of what we are doing. Praise the Lord. It is by saying that as what? As a proof of what we are doing. Are we actually spending time in the house of God? I pray that you and I will receive a new understanding from this day of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a son and a sheep. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will you withdraw from them that what? That walk uprightly. Who are those who walk uprightly? Those that are serving God faithfully. Those that are serving God righteously. I pray that that shall be your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, another scriptural example was Job, just like I mentioned earlier. Job was a servant of God to the point that when the devil, when God has the devil, where have you been? He said, I have, I've been rolling to and fro the head. And he says, have you considered my servant Job? So God considered Job his servant. Praise the Lord. So that was God's description of Job. Why? Because Job was a servant of God. He did not only serve God, he also served humanity. He was a giver. He was a generous giver. He was high to the blind. He was left to the lame. He was years to the dawn, praise to the death, rather. And he was mouth to the dawn. Praise the Lord. And we could see that all of these services qualified Job to access what God's divine secrets. How did we know this? In the book of Proverbs, chapter 29 and verse 4, Job was testifying. He says, As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. So that means the services that Job was rendering to God and to humanity qualified him access to what? To divine secrets, to secret things. And that was what made him what? The richest man in his days. Praise the Lord. Because I tell you what, it, it takes seeing things. Even in our days now, it takes seeing the things with the highest that is beyond the ordinary to be able to what? To become a wealthy businessman. Praise the Lord. Because why? Seeing beyond the ordinary makes you to see opportunities that are close or that other people have been blindfolded to. Praise the Lord. And when you grab such opportunity, then you make something out of it. Praise the Lord. So Job had access to what? To divine secrets. And that is one of the things, that is one of the values that becomes a full benefit to us as children of God, as we serve God. I pray that you won't miss out from there in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, what are the keys to commanding our marital breakthroughs? What are the keys to commanding our marital breakthroughs? We have spoke to, we have said to us this morning that one of the things that is required in marriage is wisdom. We also need what? We also need honor. We need glory. We need to manifest His glory even in our marriage, even as we manifest our marital destinies. But then we need to understand what we need to do. Because why? What you don't know, you can't benefit from. Praise the Lord. It is only what you know that you can benefit from. This morning, let's understand that marital challenges constitute major concern today in the body of Christ. But we have a lasting solution. Through the word, through the revelation of the word. Praise the Lord. There is nothing that we are running to and fro about in life this day that the scripture has not provided solution for. But it takes the opening of the book to actually discover what that solution is. It takes revelation, it takes logos, it takes rema. Praise the Lord. These are the ways that God can speak to us, that God can provide solution for us for signing any matter that we may be facing at the moment. I pray. That as you open the book, you will receive revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 68 and verse 6. God sets the solitude in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. May you not be rebellious in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So if God's original plan for us is to be gloriously married, is to bring forth glorious children, he says be fruitful and multiply. That was part of the original intention for us. So you can't be fruitful, you can't multiply when you are not married. We are not talking about somebody may say, but I can have children even when I don't have a husband. No, we are not talking about that. We are not talking about having a child out of wedlock. God does not support infidelity. God does not support having a child out of wedlock. So if you are going to what? To be fruitful and multiply, then you have to be gloriously married. Praise the Lord. And one of those things that we need to understand that in order to assess or manifest that glorious destiny in marriage is what? Assessing the light from the, the word of God. 
And I pray that this morning you will accept that light in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, encounter with light from the pages of God's word is what guarantees our breakthrough. Matthew 11 and verse 28. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. What is that thing that is making you to run to and fro from one job to the other? Why don't you seek God? Why don't you seek God? Why don't you make a time with God and you know commune with your God? Have a good conversation with your God. Ask him what you need to do to be able to walk, to stop running around from one place to another. And I pray that as you do so, God will reveal himself to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, the devil does not want us to manifest our glorious destiny. Look at that parable that uh, our brother mentioned to us last week. That master sold good seed. He sold good seed in his field. But then the servant said to him, he said, oh, But master, you have sown good seed onto the field. How come there are tasks among the good seed that you have sown? He said, But an enemy has done this. So the enemy is the one behind any form of marital frustration. Whether you are married or you are still struggling to get a life partner. The devil is the one behind it. And until we assess light from, the, from God's word, we don't know how to deal with them. Remember, the scripture says, it said, the labor of the foolish wearied them all. Because why? He knew not how to go into the city. May you never be found lacking God's wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. From this day onward, you will always know what to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Concerning anything, concerning your marital destiny, concerning your academic, Concerning your, 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 your businesses, I pray that from this day you will always know what to do in the mighty name of Jesus. The scripture testified of Christ said, For he himself knew what he would do. From this day, you will always know what to do in the name of Jesus. Now, first of all, we need to understand that our marital rights in redemption is, has already been ordained from God. It is only for us to what? To walk into it. Praise the Lord. And we can only walk into it by what? By engaging in quality service to God. Praise the Lord. Also, let's understand that every child of God that so desires has the God given right to fulfill his or her glorious marital destiny. By what? By getting married. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. So God created man in his own image. The image of God created in him. Male and female created he them. But then the thief comes. Not for what? But for to kill, to destroy, and to steal. The devil does not want anyone to fulfill destiny. If not, King Herod wouldn't be seeking after the life of Christ as well. So, but today you are fulfilling your marital destinies in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father is a marriage maker. We need to understand that. And as such, we can't be marriage beggar. Say to yourself, if my father is a marriage maker, I can't be a marriage beggar. Say to yourself, please, if my father is a marriage maker, I can't be a marriage beggar. Somebody may say, but I'm already married. But then there are certain things that are going on in marriage. Hallelujah. And it takes God, it takes wisdom to actually what? Always know what to do. It takes wisdom to actually be someone that will always reach a point of compromise. Why? Because marriage is an institution ordained by God. And it is coming together. It is the coming together of two imperfect people. Coming together to work towards their perfection. Praise the Lord. You are not perfect and not perfect. I am first one in my family. You are last one in your family. How do we reach a point of equilibrium? We need wisdom. Praise the Lord. That wisdom will not be starts in your life today in the mighty name of Jesus. Marriage is a good thing and every good thing is our entitlement in Christ including a peaceful, joyful and fruitful and settled married life. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11, you can read that on your own and 18 verse and Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 22. Also find it a wife, find it a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now that we understand God's original intention and that we have understood that part of God's original intention for us is to be gloriously married. We have understood that being gloriously married or having our marital destiny established in a colorful manner is part of the redemptive rights that God has ordained for us. We need to know what we need to do to actualize this. Now, 
what to do to actualize our glorious destiny. What do we need to do? Number one, we need to remain in love with God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for them, to, to, to them that love God, and to them that are called according to what? To his purpose. Praise the Lord. So you have been called according to God's purpose. Part of God's purpose is to move his kingdom forward. So things will only be working for good to those people, to those who love God in service. To those who are not only saying, Lord, 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 I love you with your mouth, but not in deed and in truth. Praise the Lord. Those are the ones that will what? That will enjoy, you know, being gloriously married. So we need to remain in love with God. Not with the words of our mouth only, but even in our service. We need to prove it. Even in our obedience, praise the Lord, to his commandments. Praise the Lord. Number two, we need to be committed to kingdom advancement endeavors. That is what we have been telling us. You know, many people are running, you know, after what to eat, what to drink, and all those things. But the scripture tells us in Matthew 6 and uh, verse 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things that men are trying to get shall become what? Additions unto you. When you seek after God, then you don't need to be begging God for anything. You don't need to be begging any man. Praise the Lord. So let's remain in love with God and also be fervent in serving the Lord, serving the advancement of His kingdom. And as such, our marital destiny shall be colorfully established in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Also, number three, we need to beware of pride. Pride is one thing that has ruined many marriages today. Praise the Lord. You are the husband, you say, No, I can't apologize to my wife. If she cannot apologize to me, then I can't apologize. After all, I paid a dowry. After all, I paid a bride price. You understand? You are the woman, you say, oh no, you, you have never done anything wrong in your own sight. You have never seen anything wrong in what you are doing. You, don't, you have never found a chance to be the first person to apologize. Praise the Lord. That is what? It's pride. There is no other description to it. It is what? It is pride. You are a young woman, a man is sitting, your man is married. You are asking him, do you have land or do you have houses in Banana Island? Or do you have houses in Brisbane CBD? What kind of car do you use? Who told you that a car and a house is a requirement to what? To, you know, saying yes to a man asking your hand in marriage. Praise the Lord. All of these things are things that will later become addition. If only you will marry a man of vision and not a man of, you know, substance. Praise the Lord. Let's see after what? Vision. Let's sit after a man that was that has vision, not a man that has items to show for, for it. Remember the scripture says, he said, for the life of a man consisted not in the abundance of things which he has or possesses. Praise the Lord. So it is not by what? By the substance that a man has. It is by what? The values that that man possesses. The kind of vision that that man has. And that is what will give you joy in the later life. I pray that you are now moving south in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now you are a young man. A woman has been parambulating and dancing around you, petting around you like water. But you have never been sensitive enough to know that, no, God is speaking something here. That is pride. You are saying, no, well, that sister, no, I can't, I can't, I don't know, that sister, no, I don't like the way I know things. I don't like her legs, you understand? May it never be too late for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Number four, we need to believe in God and his prophets. Remember, believe in the Lord your God. He says, so shall you prosper. Believe also in his prophet, so shall you be established. Praise the Lord. So there are prophets, there are pastors, there are apostles that God has sent over us by time. To be what? To be feeding us constantly with his word. Remember, faith comes by hearing and constant hearing of the word of God. That is why many a times we open the pages of the scriptures but we are not getting the understanding of the mysteries behind the letters of the scriptures but when we have the apostles we are seated under the administration of those that god has placed over us then a new understanding is done unto us praise the lord that is why the house of god is a place of understanding psalm 84 verse 17 until i entered into the house of god then understood how they are there until we come into the house of God, we may be void of understanding. May we never be void of understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And lastly, this morning, let's keep our faith alive. Let's keep our faith alive. You are still trusting God for a marital partner. Keep your faith alive. 
Don't let anything, don't let the devil dissuade your mind. Remember the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38, Now the just shall do what? Shall live by his own faith. Not just by faith, but by his own faith. He says, but if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. May God always have pleasure in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have been blessed this morning, why don't you clap your hands to Jesus to Jesus this morning? Celebrate God this morning. As we rise unto our faith this morning, let's rise unto our faith and say a word of prayer this morning. Let's say, Father, I decree that everything called marital spell and causes an enchantment. Any forces that may be militating against the establishment of my glorious destiny, marital destiny be shattered today by the word and the anointing word this morning. Open your mouth and pray. Pray the prayer. Pray your desires this morning. Believe because God is here. Pray in faith this morning. You have been married. You already have children. You already settled. Pray that any forces that may not want your marital destiny to be to, to end well or to be gloriously established that God should shatter them this morning as the anointing comes upon your head this morning. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree, Lord, scatter every form of marital spell and entanglement against my glorious marital destiny. This year, this year I shall be colorfully married. This year, I am meeting my glorious partner, Lord. I am meeting that God-ordained partner this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I won't let anything go as far as marriage is concerned. In the name of Jesus. Remember the scripture says in Numbers 23 and verse 23. It says there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. Lord Jesus, let people say concerning me, what has God wrought? Let that be my testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Establish my colorful marriage this year in the name of Jesus. Maybe you are here, you have been facing one challenge or the other in your marriage. Your wife or your husband has never agreed with you on any matter. Say, Father, intervene in my marriage. Intervene in my marriage this year, Lord. Intervene in my marriage today, Lord. And come next Sunday, I am coming here to share testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you all the praise. We oh, bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. You see, Balaam was hired by Balak to come and cause. But he said, I have received commandment to bless and has blessed and I cannot reverse it. I pray that God bless me over you this morning. No one will be able to reverse it in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't hear what that thing is. I don't hear who that person is. The blessing of the Lord over you this morning. No man will be able to reverse it in the mighty name of Jesus. You are coming here to share your colorful testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. And the world will rejoice and laugh with you at the end in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Part of the mysteries that have been made available for us today is the anointing oil. And you see, the cardinal purpose of the anointing oil is what? Is the low breaking power. That is the cardinal power of the anointing oil. And the anointing oil is available for us this morning. Praise the Lord. I want to believe we brought our bottles of anointing oil. If we have not brought the bottles of bottles, if you have not brought the bottles of our anointing oil, let's share this one. Please open the bottle, please. The anointing oil is made available for us this morning. And the power in this anointing oil will break every yoke, every form of yoke that may be meditating and change the establishment of our glorious destiny, or any forces that may be perpetrating evil concerning our marriages this morning. I thought somebody would say amen. amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. We declare this oil, the anointing oil of God this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that the yoke-breaking power of the anointing oil this morning, as it comes upon everyone this morning, Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice this morning, Lord, break every yoke from off their neck in the mighty name of Jesus. Destroy and shatter any form of yoke upon their shoulders in the mighty name of Jesus. After the order of Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27, you said the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Lord, by this anointing this morning, destroy every yoke in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The anointing came upon Cyrus. 
and every verse and hand on in his life were broken. And he made an extraordinary man out of it. I pray everyone that will partake of this oil this morning shall return an extraordinary man and woman in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we give you praise. We celebrate your faithfulness. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Can you partake of this oil? Put a little of this oil in your palm and touch your forehead and begin to appropriate it. Begin to appropriate, begin to say those things, begin to pray, begin to ask in faith those things that you want God to do for you by this anointing oil. Believe it, believe that there is a power, the no breaking power in the anointing oil. The devil does not want anyone to fulfill destiny. But as for you this morning, your faith is already different. In the mighty name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Begin to appropriate it, begin to appropriate it this morning. Say, Father, by this anointing oil, I will be colorfully mine. By this anointing oil, every go meditating against my destiny, my career, my businesses, my work, my, my endeavors, all of my vocations, they are shattered by this anointing. By this anointing, I receive the unction of favor to be located by the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. The man that you have ordained for me, the woman that you have ordained for me, in the name of Jesus, by this anointing oil this morning, Lord, my marriage is taking a new turn in the mighty name of Jesus. By this anointing this morning, Lord, everything that the devil might have been mocking me over, Lord, who turn to me for a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Uh, we are not done yet, please. If you believe in the efficacy of this anointing oil, kindly take a shot, put a little in your, in your finger, and touch your tongue with it. If you believe in the efficacy of the anointing oil, every form of dough, every form of thing, every form of charge in our body system will be quenched in the mighty name of Jesus. Every form of charge in our body system will be quenched in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe in it, Please do it in the name of Jesus. Believe God that by this anointing oil this morning, Lord, this uh, as I partake of this anointing oil, Lord, you are baptizing me with what? With fire of the Holy Ghost. And anything that is not planted by my Father in heaven shall be rooted out in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for our hand for blessing as we depart from this service today. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for visiting us this morning by the anointing oil and by the word this morning. Lord, we pray, Lord, that every attendee in today's service, oh Lord, will return with their testimonies come next Sunday in the name of Jesus. We we'll pray, Lord Almighty, that this week shall be a week of favor for everyone here today in the name of Jesus. Lord, this week, O oh Lord Almighty, for those that are in business, a new order of profit this week in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who are in academics, I pray, Lord, the spirit of discernment, the spirit of understanding by this anointing oil comes upon everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit that makes one to always know what to do at every junction in life comes upon everyone today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord Almighty, that from this service today, marital destiny shall be colorfully established in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord Almighty, that the works of the hands of this ones you will bless in the name of Jesus. For every one of us here today, Lord Almighty, that we are believing you for one thing or the other. Lord, let those things become testimonies for us in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Lord, by the, by the Spirit, by the function that is upon the servant Bishop David that makes him to see things as he says it. Lord, this morning, Lord, as your people begin to say good things concerning themselves, they shall be rewarded with testimonies in the name of Jesus. This week, you are returning with your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. This week, nothing shall be lacking in your life in the name of Jesus. Before you call, the answer will be there in the name of Jesus. Before you ask for anything, the provision will already be there. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Celebrate God with a clap of praise this morning. Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Praise the Lord.
let's share the goodness and fellowship this morning. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Our covenant greeting. Praise the Lord and more than a conqueror. Yes. The same is my best life in Christ. Congratulations, congratulations. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord.